Welcome back Pokemon Trainers, Professor Chaz here. The lab coat is on back order, and I'm starting off this week's news update video with, as usual, an announcement of the booster packs I'm going to be opening up at the end of the video. I have not one, not two, not four, but three booster packs. I've got the X and Y base set. I'm going to have a an Ancient Origins, as well as the new one, Breakthrough. So these are going to be opened up at the end of the video, and for those of you that have been following the channel, you probably have heard this so many times by now, but for any newcomers, what we're going to do, I'm going to open these up, and I'm going to give a question of the day, which you can answer by leaving a comment in the comments down below. Use the hashtag QOTD in response to the question. The TCG online code cards that I pull out of these packs are going to go to random viewers who leave comments using the hashtag QOTD. So the opening is coming up at the end of the video. Let's get into the news right now. Now, first of all, I'm going to mention in Pokemon Picross, for those of you that might have this game, Mew has appeared. They've actually given a code out, a password, that you can enter into the game, and it's going to unlock a Mew puzzle in the game. So the code is 75603372. What you do is, on your main screen, go to your home base, I think it's called, and you can enter a password. There's like a setting for options and password. Go to password, enter that password in, and I think it's in Area 4. It's going to unlock the stage where you can actually battle Mew. It's like you know a Mew Picross puzzle. Complete it and you will add the mythical Mew to your collection in Pokemon Picross. Now, there's some pretty big information to announce for both the video game and the TCG this week. We're going to start off with the video game. I've got my notes in behind here, so don't mind if I lean forward and look off to the side. So, the 2016 International Challenge is coming up for January. This is going to be the first online competition to use the latest Pokemon Video Game Championship Series format. And I announced this a while back. Well, I announced it. I mentioned it after Pokemon announced it. It's where they're going to be featuring and including some of the legendary Pokemon that since, I think, 2010 have been banned from actual competition. Some of these are going to be coming back. So it is the first, yeah, first online competition to use this new format, or the current format. The top players in each age division are eligible to earn championship points, which go towards receiving an invite to the Pokemon World Championships being held in San Francisco, I believe, this August. So it is double battles in the Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire League. Uh, you need the blue pentagon on your Pokemon for them to be able to compete, so you can't use previously, uh, previous generation Pokemon that have been brought up with the Poke Transporter, which means, personally, I won't be taking part in this particular online competition, because I want to be able to use my main guys. I didn't mind making a team for the Festive Few, because that was a pretty cool reward, that Happy Hour Delibird, which I'm oh so happy with every hour. And But yeah, so you need Generation 6 Pokemon either caught or bred in either the X and Y games or Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Those Pokemon are the only ones permitted. And the sign-up period is from Jan or Thursday, January 21st through Thursday, January 28th. The competition period starts that Friday, January 29th, until Sunday, January 31st. You're going to be able to get your battles in for those three days of the weekend. The participant or participation limit is 50,000 people, and it's a first-come, first-served basis. The participation gift is 2,000 Pokemiles for qualified participants, and to qualify... You just simply have to register, you know, during the registration period and complete at least one battle during the competition. Now, of course, you want to try to complete as many as you can because if you manage to rank really high in the ratings, you're going to get some of these championship points and possibly receive an invite to this world championship big showdown in the world of Pokemon. And many legendary Pokemon, as usual, are not permitted, but as I mentioned in way back, not way back when, but back when I announced, back when I confirmed or forwarded the announcement that Pokemon made. Certain legendary Pokemon are going to be permitted, and they are Mewtwo, Lugia, Ho-Oh, Groudon, Kyogre, and Rayquaza, and then I'm going in generation, basically. From fourth generation, we have Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina. Fifth gen, we have Zekrom, Reshiram, and Curum. And the current generation, Xerneas, Eveltal, and Zygarde. That's 15 legendary Pokemon all super-powered, and these are going to be permitted in the World Championships. It's going to change so many things. I wonder how many of them are going to drop Mega Kangaskhan. Bam! Anyways, these Pokemon will be permitted, and in this online competition, you're going to be able to use them as well. It's basically uh, leading you a taste of what's to come in the World Championships, which makes sense, because if you do win and place high in the rankings, you're going to get championship points to possibly bring you to the World Championships. So, the rewards are for the top 256 players in each age division to get these championship points. And first place gets 45 championship points, 
and they go down the line from there. I'm going to include a link in the description of this video. You can click that. It's going to take you to Pokemon.com. It gives you the whole breakdown of what ranking you place at and what number of championship points you'll earn for that placing or that placement. And yeah, I'm going to have the link down in the description. So that's basically the information about that online competition. It's going to be pretty cool. Um, I might see if I can watch some videos on YouTube because as I say I'm not really going to you know participate in it. I might on a whim just see what I can do with the Festive Few team but they're more situated for a triple battle and these are going to be doubles. I could still make it work. Who knows? Maybe on the off chance that I decide to, I'll see if I can record some stuff if I decide to take part. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, that is the announcement for the video game and if any more information comes up I'll be sure to include it in the next update video. But now I want to talk about the trading card game because some pretty cool announcements have been made. First of all, a new product has been made available for sale. It is the TCG Break Evolution Box. This includes three new Break Evolution Pokemon that we haven't seen yet, one oversized Break card, and five TCG Booster Packs, as long, or as long, <laughs> along with, or as well as, a online code card using TCG Online. And what I didn't do last week with the Aurorus EX and Mega Aerodactyl EX boxes, we're actually going to look at the cards of these Break Evolutions right now. So, we have Noctowl Break. This is a 130 HP colorless Pokemon. Three energy, or three colorless energy. Night Scan does 60, plus your opponent reveals his or her hand. This attack does 30 more damage for each trainer card you find there. So, it's similar to the basic, not basic, but the Stage 1 Noctowl from Breakthrough, in that it does more damage based on both trainers' hands, uh, the number of item cards found there. This only focuses on your opponent's hand, but it's or doing 60 base damage, 30 more for every trainer card, not just items. Supporters and stadiums would count too. So that isn't very bad at all. The next break evolution we see is Behem Break. It is a psychic Pokemon with 130 HP. For three psychic energy, Cosmic Circle does 100 damage, and it says move as many psychic energy attached to your Pokemon to your other Pokemon in any way you like. So that is pretty decent damage a good maneuverability of your energies around in case, you, you know, maybe something's about to get knocked out, you can actually just pull the energy away from it, you're not going to lose your energies. And the third break evolution in this set, and it looks like this is the oversized card, Empoleon Break, 170 HP, a water Pokemon, for a water and colorless energy, Emperor's Command does 30 times, it does 30 damage times the number of Pokemon your opponent has in play. Now it's interesting they don't say on your, I guess, okay, I was going to say, it's interesting they don't say on your opponent's bench, but it's including the active one as well. So if they have a full setup of six Pokemon, that's 180 damage from Empoleon Break. So that's pretty interesting, pretty powerful stuff. And these are all promo cards. You can only obtain them from that box set that I just showed you there. So just see where you can pick one of those up, and you're going to get those three cards. And I don't know what the online code card would unlock, but I'm assuming it would give you all three of those Break Evolutions. Now, in addition to the Break Evolution collection box, They've announced three more cards on Pokemon.com from the upcoming Breakpoint set. We're going to take a look at them right now. First up is Espeon EX, 170 HP, Psychic Pokemon. For one colorless energy, Miraculous Shrine says, Devolve each of your opponent's evolved Pokemon and put the highest stage evolution card on it into your opponent's hand. Now this is similar to, I believe it was, uh, Claydol from the Ancient Origins set. It might have been Breakthrough actually, but I think it was Ancient Origins. It essentially did the same thing. You could actually devolve each of your opponent's Pokemon and put the highest stage evolution card into their hand. So, what you want to do is try to combine this with something like, say, Greninja, or the upcoming Greninja Break, which is going to allow you to put damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon before the attack. If you can then use Espeon EX to de-evolve them down into a previous stage with less HP than the amount of damage they currently have, you're going to get a knockout with that. Now, also, Espeon EX is sporting the Psy Shock attack. A Psychic and two colorless energy does 70 damage, and this attack's damage isn't affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. So just a simple, straight 70 damage. You can, of course, power it up with effects on your own Pokemon, such as a Muscle Band or something like that. But <clears throat> a Hard Charm, any effects of a previous attack like Scrunch or something, it's not going to block that 70 damage. So the next card they reveal is Trevenant Break Evolution. We've got another break here. 160 HP, a Psychic Pokemon. Now Silent Fear for a Psychic and Colorless Energy. Put three damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon. This ignores things like Bench Barrier, it ignores Hard Charm, anything like that, any sort of protection. You're just placing damage counters down. 
if they have a full team out there, five on the bench, one active, you're putting out 180 points of damage across the opponent's side of the field. And after that happens, if you happen to use Gengar from the Breakthrough expansion, Gengar can then knock out anything that they have active. They've got 30 damage, Gengar can knock out anything with three damage counters. The final card that's currently been revealed is an item card, a Pokemon tool, the Fighting Fury Belt. You must uh, you can attach it to any Pokemon, but it only really affects basic Pokemon. The basic Pokemon this card is attached to gets plus 40 HP, and it's attached to 10 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So you're going to gain a lot more HP with that, do some extra damage. Where it says basic, you're going to want to probably put it on an EX Pokemon, a non-Mega Evolution, because those are all basic, of course. So ma imagine what would be a good basic Pokemon, big, uh, thinking pre-Mega Evolution, adding 40 HP to that, and doing 10 more damage. It's actually quite powerful. So another good thing is combine, you know, I say combine it. Put it onto a Pokemon EX, that way your opponent can't play any of those Team Flare Hyper Gear cards, which I like to use in the online game from time to time. So that is all the announcements I have for this week's news update video. We are now going to get into the booster pack openings. As I said, the X and Y base set, we have an Ancient Origins, and the newest one is Breakthrough. I'm going to pop these open and I'll give you the question of the day you to leave a response in the comments down below answering the question. All right, let's get started. So we're about ready to get into these three booster packs of the Pokemon TCG, but we're going to start off with the question of the day for you folks, and it's actually inspired by something that I saw on Twitter. Now, I follow Morgan Want, and she shared this photo, and the question of the day is going to be, would you rather visit the past or would you rather visit the future? Also, why would you like to visit either time period? And my joke response to this was, definitely the past. You can do more damage that way. Of course, it was uh, more like a paraphrased quote from Ghostbusters. But anyway, uh, I thought about it myself, and my preference would probably be to visit the future. And the reason is, if you visit the past, like I you know, kind of made a joke about it, you can really change things as they are now. So, like, you know, go back in time. If you make one little change, it might change everything you know about the world. It might make a, you know, little change, but it could be a big change. I'd rather not run that risk. I'd rather go to the future. And plus, going to the future, you get to see all the new advancements and things that we make over the years. So, yeah, my preference would definitely be the future. Um, for anyone that knows me, one of my favorite things about the future, as told to us by the Back to the Future series, is hoverboards. And we still don't have hoverboards. It's 2015, or it's 2016 already. We didn't get our hoverboards yet. So, that would be my preference. Go to the future, get a hoverboard. Whatever else happens, happens. So anyway, leave your question, or sorry, leave your response to the question of the day down below in a comment. Use the hashtag QOTD and let me know, would you rather visit the past or the future and why? So starting off, we're going to go with the oldest set. We're going to go X and Y base set and cut the top off. See what, or sorry, see what cards I get and the code card, we're going to hold off to the side and leave your comments in response to the question of the day. And on Sunday, what I'm going to do is take a look at all the comments and randomly select one commenter that left the hashtag QOTD to receive this code card along with the other two. So that is off to the side, and we're going to take a look at the physical cards that I'll be adding to my collection today. Starting off, we have a Swirlix. Make sure the camera focuses, and then we're good. Staryu, Pansage, a Slugma, and an Inkay. Uncommon cards, getting a Super Potion. An Illumise. I used you in the Chestnut Break deck. You're actually quite useful. A Hard Charm, also quite useful, reducing damage by 20 if you attach it to a Pokemon. The Reverse Foil card is a Raichu. Now, I've seen people use this one to good effect. The Circle Circuit, the attack does 20 damage times the number of your benched Pokemon for 2 energy. You can basically have, like, you know, say 5 on the bench. And that's doing 100 damage, but if you have the Sky Field, you're suddenly doing 160 if you have a full bench of 8 Pokemon. And Thunderbolt does a powerful 100 for 2 Lightning and a Colorless, but you discard all energy attached to Raichu. So it's kind of a big drawback. But that is the Reverse Foil. The rare card of the X and Y base set pack is a Foil Trevenant. The ability is Forest Curse. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your opponent can't play any item cards from his or her hand. That's very powerful, shutting down your opponent's trainer cards, at least some of them, while this thing is active. And Tree Slam for a Psychic and two Colorless does 60. It does 20 damage to two of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Not bad. We're going to stand you back there, Trevenant. Not, why not? Keep you up there in view of the uh, viewers. 
All right, so moving quite forward in time, we're skipping up to the Ancient Origins pack with the shiny Mega Rayquaza on the art, or the art on the pack. And again, question of the day is, would you rather visit the past or the future, and why? So this code card, I like how sometimes they face upward, so I have to sort of hide them as I pull them out. So this code card, off to the side, to be revealed Sunday to one lucky commenter who leaves the hashtag QOTD with the response to the question. So the cards we're getting out of the Ancient Origins start with a Cottony, Focus. Come on. Just one second. We'll make sure the camera is nice and focused. Okay. So, Cottony. A Relicant. Golurk. Beldum. And another common is Ball Toy. Now, under the uncommons, we get a Level Ball. Very useful. A Sableye. Now, I want to try to use this guy in an online deck sometime, just for the fun of bewitching eyes. Choose a supporter card from your opponent's discard pile and use it as the effect of this attack. There's so many crazy things that could happen. I want to try that. Alright, last uncommon is a Lysandre. As I'm always saying in the online game, very useful. You want to have at least one Lysandre in your deck so you can maneuver your opponent's Pokemon around. Possibly get a knockout on something that isn't ready to be active, but you can make it active. Alright, reverse foil card is Ace Trainer. You can only play this card if you have more prizes left than your opponent, and each player shuffles their hand into the deck. You draw six cards, the opponent draws three. Very good, and it's a nice reverse foil card. And the rare card of the Ancient Origin set is... Secret Rare Energy Retrieval! Nice! I haven't actually gotten one of these Secret Rare Gold Rimmed ones before. Put two basic energy cards from your discard pile into your hand. Basic effect? Awesome card! You are going to stand back here next to Trevenant until I can get a nice protective sleeve for you, my friend. Okay, that was probably the best pull I've had out of an, uh, I was going to say an online pack. The best pull I've had out of a physical pack in quite some time. Let's see if Breakthrough can hold up that. So, once more, the question of the day is, would you rather visit the past or the future, and why? So, I'm going to take this code card to the side. And the 10 TCG cards. Let's see what I get. I don't think we're going to stand up to the uh, the awesomeness of the uh, Secret Rare Energy Retrieval, but let's see what we can do. We have a Magnemite with Sparkling Induction Ability. A Piplup. A Pansage. An Elgium. And a Sad Cubone. I've mentioned this before, but look how sad the art is. He's nuzzling the bone. Of, is, it his, is it his mother's bone? I don't know. It's just sad. All right, uncommons. We have a Brakeson, a Spupa, Protect and Tackle. How does the Spupa's Tackle do 30? I don't know. Anyways, the last uncommon is a Stunfisk. Okay, the reverse foil card shall be a Snubble. It can roar and bite, just like a dog should do. And the rare card of the Breakthrough Pack is a Noctowl. So, I've seen this one, and I've heard people talk about it. It has high flight, so... Actually, I mentioned this too, just now that I think about it, in the earlier part of the video. High flight, 20 damage times... Okay, each player reveals his or her hand. 20 damage times the number of item cards revealed in both players' hands, and it's only for 2 energy. And then for 3 energy, Speed Dive does 70. So, you could break evolve this into the Noctowl break from the box collection set. Suddenly you can do either High Flight or whatever the other attack name was of the Noi or I say Noivern, the Noctowl break. So, actually a very useful card. Pretty powerful. So, especially if you're going to run a deck full, uh, filled with item cards, if you can play things like Roller Skates and draw as many cards as possible, this could be a powerful Noctowl. So, that is the openings of the booster packs. I just want to kind of hold this one up a little bit closer once again. Definitely an awesome card to have pulled. I'm pretty sure I want to make use of this in one of the decks as soon as possible. Alright, so we're going to end off this video once more. One more reminder. Question of the day. Would you rather visit the past or would you rather visit the future and why? So once again, leave a comment down below. Use the hashtag QOTD in response to the question. On Sunday, I'll be select or selecting three random commenters to get one of these online code cards. And with that, we're going to wrap up the end of this video. Thanks for checking out the news this week, folks, and come back tomorrow to check out another Pokemon TCG online battle. I've got an interesting deck assembled using the new Bronzong from the current Breakthrough set. 
So, alright, thank you once again for checking out this video, and I'll catch you next time.